Rudyard Kipling. You probably best remember this British author and poet for The Jungle Book. But his most enduring work perhaps is a poem by the title of If. Ever since this 1910 publication, it has appeared on inspirational posters, memorized by school children on both sides of the pond, and hailed as an example of what is meant by a British stiff upper lip. The boxer Muhammad Ali reportedly kept a copy of the poem in his wallet. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. There's several more ifs in this poem, all leading up to the last verse that reveals what will happen if all the ifs become reality. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. If only you do all this, the world is yours. If only. Has that two-word phrase ever been used by yourself? If only I had turned left rather than right. If only I had studied more, I might have gotten an A on that test. If only I paid more attention to what the preacher said last Sunday. On the church calendar, November 1st is known as All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. October 31st is therefore All Hallows Eve or Halloween. In early Christian tradition, saint days began as a way to mark the anniversary of a martyr's death, his or her birthday as a saint. After a while, there were more of these saints than days in a year. So the church began celebrating All Saints Day to recognize every saint, both known and unknown. Now, in our Reformed tradition, we don't really go into the idea of saints the same way as some of the other denominations do. You see, while we may give thanks for the lives of particular faith giants of our past, our tradition's emphasis is on the ongoing sanctification of the whole people of God. Rather than putting saints on pedestals as holy people set apart in glory, we give glory to God for the ordinary, holy lives of the believers in this and every age. All of us are saints, people set apart for God. And we celebrate those saints who got us here, those ordinary people who came before, building this church, taking us to Sunday school, and setting us on a right path. It's our parents, our grandparents, our friends that we celebrate today. Those who have gone before us and those who surround us today. So... We are a couple of days late, but happy All Saints Day to you. If only we had a scripture that could focus our attention on the meaning of the day. Oh, but wait, we do. 
Jesus raising Lazarus from the tomb. So we'll be revisiting that story today along with our sermon titled, If Only. If only you would stick around for that coming up later in this service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina for Sunday, November 3rd, 2024. Our annual food drive for crisis assistance ministry is off to a good start. We'll talk more about that later, but note that this drive ends November 17th, the same day as a couple of other big events here at our church. First, we'll be observing reaffirmation of the baptismal vows during worship. And then afterward, it will be our Thanksgiving lunch in Fellowship Hall. We hope you will be able to join us for all of this. We forgot to mention this last Sunday, but if you woke up today confused by what time it was, you're probably not alone. At 2 a.m. today, our clocks fell back an hour to 1 a.m. Daylight saving time came to an end this morning. Don't forget to reset your clocks if you haven't already. You know, even that one in your car. Now that we've synchronized our clocks, you'll see that it's time to begin this service with our responsive call to worship. The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and those who live in it. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those with clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false. Such is the company of those who seek the Lord, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn of praise for today's service is Tell Me the Old, Old Story. Please sing along as Ashley provides the music.
Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before God, no creature is hidden. But all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. With this in mind, let us confess our sins before God. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way, that joined with those from ages past, who have served you with faith, hope, and love, we may inherit the kingdom you promised in Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. to believe it's already the first Sunday of the month and the 11th month of the year. Can you believe that? Wow, time flies fast. Not so fast for those with empty stomachs, those who don't know for certain when they might eat again. As you know, on the first Sunday of each month, we collect and dedicate your five cents a meal offering. Half of your offerings to this fund goes to the Presbytery of Western North Carolina for distribution by our hunger committee, while the other half goes to Crisis Assistance Ministry of Greater Gastonia. As we mentioned at the beginning of this service, we are also in the midst of our annual drive to collect food items to help restock the shelves at CAM. We are particularly interested in canned soups and meats, canned fruits and vegetables, pasta, macaroni and cheese packages, cereal, oatmeal, and other non-perishable foods. Bring by your donations on Sunday mornings, Wednesdays around 2 o'clock, or call ahead and let us know when you can stop by. This drive runs through November 17th. Now, let us give thanks and dedicate your gifts, tithes, and offerings to the Lord. Gracious God, you set us upright and cause our feet to stand firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of our faith. We bring you ourselves in response to your grace and mercy. 
you test us in Christ and find us worthy of your benevolent care and compassion. Through the visitation of your Spirit, you allow us to shine forth to your glory and honor and cause your light to shine forth on the nations. We bring you our gifts in response to your graciousness and ask that you will watch over us as we go for, forth to serve you in thought, word, and deed. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading comes to us from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. Listen for the word of our Lord. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. It is our tradition for All Saints Day to sing the hymn, For All the Saints. Keep your eyes on the screen and you'll see pictures of many of our departed saints.
Our gospel reading for today comes to us from John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jew said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus! Come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Although the English language has more than 30 common two-letter words, you generally never see one of them in word puzzles. Three-letter words, um, certainly, but not their two-letter cousins. Am, by, of, we, he, to, so. Not to be found unless part of a phrase. Of particular interest to us right now is the two-letter word, if. Mathematicians and philosophers would have little need for their skills without the word if. The if-then construction is what runs computer programs. Grammar folks tell us that if is a conjunction. We're simple two-letter word, my Merriam-Webster dictionary lists several definitions, including one that I consider most appropriate for us today, used as a function to introduce an exclamation expressing a wish, as in today's sermon title, If Only. Our gospel reading is just one part of the larger story of the raising of Lazarus from his tomb. Lazarus and his sisters, Martha and Mary, were extremely close personal friends of Jesus. So much so that we are told in the Bible's shortest verse that Jesus wept over the thought of his friend's death. While Jesus was making his way to Jerusalem, he received an urgent message that Lazarus was very sick and unlikely to recover. What his sisters expected, and most likely we as readers of the story expect, is that Jesus would quickly make the trip to Bethany where they lived and then heal Lazarus. But that's not what happened. Jesus declares this episode won't end in Lazarus' death. 
A few days pass and now Jesus is ready to go to Bethany. Despite fears expressed by some of his followers that the trip might not end up being healthy for him. They tried to kill you the last time you were in Judea. But Jesus expressed no fears for himself. Instead, he tells them that Lazarus is already dead. So why go now? So that you may believe, he responds. Before Jesus reaches Bethany, the older sister, Martha, comes out to meet Jesus. If only you had been here sooner, she cries out. If only you had come when we first sent word. If only you could have performed one of your healing miracles from afar, from wherever you were, just like you did for the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, or the Capernaum official's son, or the centurion's servant. You did it before, if only then Lazarus would be alive today. But now, you are too late. It's the same line of thought expressed by Mary in today's text. Mary fell at Jesus' feet. If only you had been here, my brother would not have died. If only. How many of us have used that phrase ourselves? If only I had gotten to her sooner, this might have never happened. If only the EMS crew arrived earlier, we wouldn't be in this mess. If only the doctors could have diagnosed her quicker. If only I had prayed harder. If only God had acted. If only God had heard my pleas for help. If only. If only. A life full of regrets is one full of if onlys. Do you believe? That's the response of Jesus to Martha. Do you believe? If you believe, then you never have to say, if only God hears me. If you believe, then you know he does. That's one of the points Jesus made in his speech before calling Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus did not rush to Bethany because he already knew what was about to happen. He tells the crowd to remove the stone covering the entrance to Lazarus' tomb. Well, that command set off Martha, who just minutes before swore to Jesus that she believed in him. Lazarus has been in there for four days. The flesh has been rotting, and the odor will be bad enough to make all of us puke. She had no idea what was about to happen. Well, neither did anyone else in the crowd. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. We heard in today's reading from Isaiah. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. It would be a safe bet to wager that most of the men standing outside the tomb knew 
those verses from the prophet Isaiah, but had no clue how to interpret them. Yet here was the sovereign Lord enacting those words. Lazarus, come out, Jesus said in a loud voice. And Lazarus did. Still wrapped in his grave clothes, yet standing there, alive for all to see. If only we had been there, would we have believed? Or would we be asking why Jesus hadn't done this for one of our relatives or friends? If only. That's really the question we confront when reading this passage. As I get older, and yes, I admit I get older, I find myself not only conducting more funerals, but also attending more funerals. These are people I have known and have loved. I consider conducting a funeral to be a high privilege and honor. But I will also admit that sometimes it takes a toll on me too. Even though I know God's promises to us through Christ. Because of Christ, we know that death is not truly the end of life for those who believe. But in the moment, I think we all have a bit of Martha in us afraid of the smell of death, even while we profess faith. If only we did not have to face death. But we must. No one is immune. Not even Jesus. Days later, his lifeless body would be hanging from a Roman cross. The irony of Lazarus' story of being restored to life is that it would cost Jesus his own life. Having heard what Jesus had done increased the resolve of the religious and other leaders to snuff out the life of this man from Nazareth before he got too popular, before he upset the balance of things. We can't have someone bring people back to life when we can't do likewise. Let's put a stop to all this nonsense. Raising Lazarus led to the killing of Jesus. But killing Jesus led directly to eternal life for all. With few exceptions noted in the Old Testament, no one, not even Lazarus, had received eternal life before Christ was resurrected on Easter. The shroud had been lifted for all who believe. Our eternal lives don't actually begin with our death. They begin when we truly confess we believe that God raised Jesus from the tomb and is now sitting very much alive at the side of God the Father. Even though brought back to life by Jesus, Lazarus would die again. But this time he would rise with Christ to a new life. The resurrection we will experience will not be like the raising of Lazarus. Instead, we will be in the company of all the saints. You know, in New Orleans, there's a tradition known as a jazz funeral. On the way to the cemetery, a band plays a solemn, haunting version of the song, when the saints. But then, when everyone leaves the cemetery in a group, suddenly the band picks up the energy, and instead of a sad song, when the saints go marching in, becomes a joyous, raucous celebration. 
Everyone is dancing with delight, singing along, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Why the change? Because being a saint is not an unhappy ending. It's a beginning. It's something to rejoice in and give thanks for. Yes, it's still appropriate to mourn our lost loved ones. But at the same time, Christ has taken off the bindings that held us back. Sainthood awaits. No longer do we need to exclaim, if only. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the Lord in prayer. Author and finisher of our faith, you have set our feet firmly on freedom's foundation. We praise you and give you thanks. Witnesses of old have taught us of the deliverance of God's people from peril. Scripture recounts their covenant promise. You will be our God and we your people. You, O Christ, have sealed a new covenant in your blood and won for us the victory of life everlasting. Draw us into a right relationship with you and our neighbor. Help us to stand fast by your spirit and not abuse your trust. Make our inheritance as your sons and daughters a lasting legacy, one that we are eager to pass on to our heirs. Help us by our example to teach them what it means to love you completely and our neighbors as ourselves. We pray for neighbors both near and far. Give an extraordinary sense of your delivering power to those who live in peril for your sake. Allow them to walk free from care. Lift from their shoulders the weight of anxiety and yoke us to them during their time of trial. Gracious Lord, we come to you today in prayer, especially for the family of Freddie Kerr, particularly for Teresa and for Melinda. Our prayers continue for Ann Bodell, for Penny and for Darla, for Marilyn, for Renee Russell and Tiffany. We pray for Mitchell and Debbie Stanley, for Buster and Corinne, for Terry, Silva and Palmer. We pray for Chuck Callahan and for Ashley, for Debbie and Dan Burke, for Alan, for Barbara Plyler, for Judy and TC, Stephen and Jennifer, for Larry and for Beverly Smith. We pray for Adrian, Doug, Ashley and Bobby, for Pat Button, for Bruce and Joyce and for Beverly Fail, for Lorraine Miller and Vicki, for Candy Mall and for Susie. We pray for Mac and Rick, Tiffany and Lorraine and Michaela, for Johnny Frazier, Kay, Linda, Claudette and Morgan, for Henry Thomason and for Gary, for Nancy Denton, for Kim's mother and for Keith Quinn, for Shirley and Ron and for Paul Long. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, 
in glory everlasting, and who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess to the world what it is we believe is in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Soon and very soon is our closing hymn for today. Won't you sing along? Thank you for joining us for our couple of days later observation of All Saints Day. We hope you found worshiping with us this way helpful or uplifting. If so, please be sure to give this video a like or a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Post a written comment. And most importantly, Share the link with others so that they can partake of the gospel. It really does help when our viewers reach out to others. Remember, our food drive continues through the 17th of this month, but we hope to see you before then, either in person or online here as of noon Sunday. As God's own, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. And crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.